Uh, thank you very much for the introduction, and also thanks to Neaspec for letting me have a presentation here today. Uh, my name is Magnus Jonsson, I come from uh, Sweden Royal Institute of Technology, and what I'd like to talk about today is our research on uh, atmospheric uh, corrosion. Uh, I heard about this technique the first time in 2014. Uh, my student came back home from a conference and said, you know, Magnus, I heard about this really great IR nanoscale technique. We should have it. I said, yeah, we should, we should. But we need also the money first. Uh, so then, uh, while waiting and hoping to get a grant, I thought I should uh, see what it is, really is about. Can we use it in our corrosion stu science studies? So I went down to Neaspec and I took some successful measurements, and those are the ones that I want to present today. While I was waiting for a grant myself, I was also thinking I should learn something more about it. So, in 2017, I went down to Munich and I did a sabbatical with Fritz Kallmann. Thank you very much for having me in your group. And, uh, well, I also wanted to bring my family, of course, but it's not so hard to convince anyone to go to Munich. Beautiful city, great football team, skiing in the Alps also in the summer. What more can you ask for? So we went there and had a very good, very good time. And actually, during this time, I uh, got a grant to buy a... Um, the So Actually, two months ago, it was installed in our lab. So we are really happy about that. Uh, so atmospheric corrosion, or actually, why do we study corrosion at all? Uh, well, one simple uh, reason is that uh, each year, the cost for corrosion is a few percent of the gross national products in most Western countries. So if you can prevent corrosion in a better way, we can save a lot of money. Uh, so we study the atmospheric corrosion, so like indoor atmospheric corrosion in most cases, like how metals corrode, for example, in this room. And some questions we have is, first one is, how can we detect very early corrosion? Like why does it start? Where on the surface uh, does it start? And also we're interested in uh, putting on some protective layers. Uh, in some cases you cannot use really thick films, so we work with really thin films, like two nanometers uh, thick. Uh, organic uh, films to protect the metals from corrosion. And, well, why would we ever use uh, nano FT IR spectroscopy? Well, a lot of work has been done with conventional IR microscopy. Uh, confocal Raman, for example, those are good. The problem with uh, conventional IR microscopy is that, as you know, the best uh, spatial resolution is like 5 micron. And also, the second point there, you need a thickness of the film, like hundreds of nanometer, microns sometimes, to see some signal at all. But with nano FTR, we can have both things. We can in the XY plane, we can have 10, 20 nanometer resolution. And as I also will show you, we can also probe organic monolayers, which are just like two nanometers thick. The usually corrosion process is, um, is not homogeneous over the surface, as you can see on the picture uh, over here. Uh, you can see this has corroded a lot in the middle, not so much happened here. So if you look at the very tiny spot that's blown up here, you can also see that it's inhomogeneous. So then we want to know on the nano level what's actually happening during this corrosion process. We have used a lot of infrared reflection absorption spectroscopy, also grazing incidence IR, it's called. It's really useful. We can say a lot about which corrosion products form and how fast do they form. Uh, a problem is that the probing area is like two square centimeters. So that's like no spatial resolution whatsoever. Uh, in this case, uh, we studied copper. We've done a lot of work on copper. We exposed it to humid air and formic acid, which is like a model system for a typical indoor environments, such as this uh, room, for example. Uh, this is what it looks like if you take a copper surface, you expose it. You form a lot of copper oxide or cuprite. You form a lot of copper formate. You form a lot of copper hydroxide. You have some embedded water and hydroxide as well. You see this copper? Well, it's really corroded. Uh, they have a, a heavy problems there. So then we think, okay, we should cover this something. We cover it with a thiol molecule. This looks like this. It's just a sulfur atom. It binds very strongly to copper. And this is hydrophobic, so it doesn't attract water. So we dip a copper surface in this solution. We form a monolayer. This is actually like maybe one nanometer thick. And what happens? We expose it again. See, it formed no copper oxide at all. The piece of copper looks essentially exactly like it did from the beginning. So just by putting this nano layer of the organic film, we can completely stop the formation of cuprite on the surface. The others forms a bit, but you see, 
just a nanolayer stops the production of cuprite completely. So as I said, this was an inhomogeneous uh, process, obviously. So we would like to see more on the nanoscale what is actually happening. Uh, we also have another technique that is called vibrational sun frequency spectroscopy. It's a combination of IR and Raman, which we also have used a lot to study the, these um, organic films. For example, how their packing is changing when we expose it to these corrosive gases, and also how the orientations of them are changing. But also there, the spatial resolution is like 500 uh, micrometers. So we really wanted to see, uh, is the nanoscale spectroscopy something we can have use for? Uh, so as I said, I went down to, to Neospec, and I did some measurements some years ago. So what we wanted to map are the corrosion products, the cuprite and the copper formate. Uh, so this is first the cuprite. If you look, this is one by one micron area. This is the AFM image. You see there are some chunks around here. And you see, well, here you see two peaks in both these positions, A and B. Obviously, there is some copper oxide there. Uh, this thing is also very interesting that we can see this peak at all, actually. It's uh, 650 wave numbers. It's really at the limit where this broadband laser can generate energy. So the energy from the laser is extremely low, uh, but so it's really at the cutoff, what we see here. We also wanted to look at the copper formate. How is it distributed over the surface? Is it homogeneous or is it inhomogeneous? Uh, well, so we looked at three different points, uh, C, D, and E. You see C over here. Very strong spectrum from copper formate. So obviously this chunk is copper formate. D, well, a small chunk here, yeah, some signal as well. So it seems like there is also some copper formate up there. E, in contrast, well, there is a chunk. But obviously that chunk has to be something else. Cuprite, for example, because there is nothing in the spectrum down here. We also took some uh, single wave number imaging at 1,600 wave numbers right here at the maximum peak for the formate. And you can see it shows essentially the same as the spectrum, so we confirmed the results that you have a very strong signal down here at point C. Just to confirm also, uh, the, you can always say, ah, this is an artifact. So we scanned at, um, uh, at 1735 wave numbers where there is off resonance. And as you can see, there's nothing there. Uh, just also, should, we wanted to know, what is the spatial resolution? Well, we scanned over one particle here. You can see this is a 150 nanometer particle. This is a phase so related to the IR absorption. You can see scanning over the edge, the resolution is 20 nanometers. And also here, this particle we scanned over is 75 nanometers in diameter. It really showed to us, yes, we can really use this one to study our corrosion products. This uh, figure you already seen in Andy's talk. I wanted to show it again because I think it's important. As I said, we want to cover our copper with um, organic monolayers. So this is octa decaying thiol, two nanometer thick um, organic molecule. So we put a copper in it, and you can see, uh, as you've already seen, heard before, yes, you can actually probe on organic monolayer. Uh, so this is two nanometer, like 20 nanometer resolution. But I think it's quite amazing that you actually can see something here because there are very few molecules we actually look at. Uh, this is not related to corrosion, but I wanted to show it anyway because this is also about the domain formation of organic monolayers. Uh, this was done in Berlin together with Bernd Kessner, who gave their last uh, presentation. Uh, so this is a mixture of uh, a DSPC, it's a phospholipid commonly found in cell membranes, and also surfactant, which is an antibiotic molecule. So we mixed these two, made monolayers on them on a gold substrate, and we wanted to probe if you could see these uh, different domains. And well, yeah, you can see clearly see here that this is the bulk IR spectrum. This is spectrum we took with the with the NEOS gnome. And yes, it agrees. And also, if you go here, this is the AFM face image. This is surfactant C. When you reach here, DSPC island, you can also clearly see here that the signals start to show up as from the spectrum. So this again shows that we really can probe tiny organic monolayers with a nanoscale spatial resolution. This I'm also really excited about. This is um, in the system we bought now. We also bought a laser that can cover the region from around 2200 up to 3800, which gives us new possibilities. So now we can actually also probe water and hydroxides, which commonly are embedded in corrosion products, 
And also here in 3570, you can see that we can also probe the, uh, the copper hydroxide. Uh, so this means that essentially now we can probe, uh, this is uh, the system we just got installed, we can probe essentially the same region as a normal FTIR spectrometer uh, with an MCT detector from sort of like 650 up to 4,000 wave numbers. Uh, so we have um, QCL lasers uh, over here. We can do SNOM and we can do um, photothermal expansions in some regions. We can do also spectroscopy from 650, essentially up to uh, 4,000. Uh, and also we have a highly motivated student, Veiji Sa, who is in the audience here. So he's going to use this system to study the corrosion of uh, copper during his uh, PhD. Well, so what are we going to do during the next years? Well, the idea is then to continue the work that I did here. As we look at ultra-thin organic film, how they can protect copper surfaces. We want to look at both, what's happening with these films in each nanodomain, and try to correlate that to what's actually happening with the corrosion products, where do they form, and so on. Uh, some people I want to thank. I want to thank uh, Miriam Böhmler. Uh, she worked at Neospec earlier, and she took these um, corrosion spectra with me earlier. Uh, Adrian Chernescu, who installed our instrument two months ago, and also took some of this uh, data and has helped us a lot during the way. And also Bernd Kestner in, uh, in Berlin. And also, yeah, of course I want to take, uh, thank also Ulla Engqvist Stiftes in Sweden who gave us all the money to buy this uh, fancy instrument. Uh, last slide before I leave you. Not related to corrosion, but I have a poster position open. This is to use our uh, Neosnom system, but this is research about cellulose and how it interacts with water and also our coatings on cellulose. If you're interested, you can contact me there. Deadline is in one week. Thank you very much.